Are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling right now. And we're on the air right now. What do you think of what do you think of the thing? Oh. Last night Kate Blanchett she, I said I should have a, like a flower or something back here. Mm. Is the orchid working? Or does this look like the lobby of a spa? I think I don't think so. I don't I don't think so. You're move it? I'm, I I don't think so. Is it real? It's real. I don't think so. Folks, if you watch the show, you know I criticize Donald Trump a lot. Um, but with this coronavirus gripping our nation, it's made me realize that I don't do it enough. And I blame myself. A sentence Donald Trump has never said. Because Donald Trump clearly only thinks about the needs of Donald Trump. And right now, he needs someone to blame for how poorly he responded to the coronavirus. So yesterday, at the press briefing, he announced this. Today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization. He's defunding the World Health Organization during a global pandemic. Brilliant! It's like when your house is engulfed in flames, first thing you do, burn down the fire department. The U.S. is the WHO's biggest donor. So Trump is talking about taking away around $553 million dollars. He hasn't done anything this hostile to world health since introducing the burger table. And I'm not the only one who thinks this is dumb. So does billionaire philanthropist Bill Gates, seen here owning the runway in lavender cashmere. Work, work, work. Gates tweeted, Halting funding for the World Health Organization during a world health crisis is as dangerous as it sounds. Their work is slowing the spread of COVID-19, and if that work is stopped, no other organization can replace them. The world needs WHO now more than ever. I agree with Bill Gates, and this time I'm not just saying this to get into his will. I've always loved you, Papa. You can bing it. And I also love immunology. That's why this Saturday, I'm co-hosting, along with Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel, One World Together at Home, a celebrity benefit for the World Health Organization. It's going to have stars like Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, not only is SpongeBob doing more than the president to fight this global pandemic, he's also the only one of us still wearing pants. One World Together at Home is this Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern on CBS, ABC, NBC, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You gotta watch it, because it's on every channel, and I know you're available. Getting back to people who aren't helping, Donald Trump. He is trying really hard to justify his rash and dangerous action. The reality is that the WHO failed to adequately obtain, vet, and share information in a timely and transparent fashion. The delays the WHO experienced in declaring a public health emergency costs valuable time. The WHO has not addressed a single one of these concerns, nor provided a serious explanation that acknowledges its own mistakes. Uh, I think you might be projecting, sir. The WHO dragged its feet on COVID. The WHO cheated on Melania when she was home with a three-month-old. The WHO thinks they can get out of this by blaming all their screw-ups on the WHO. Not gonna work, WHO. So who does he think is kidding? The World Health Organization declared a global emergency on January 30th, while Trump waited until March 13th. He completely skipped February. What, does Trump go into hibernation for Black History Month? Just tell me if Frederick Douglass sees his shadow. No, I don't think this buck passing is gonna work because anybody watching the news knew the coronavirus was coming eventually. One of the reasons I'm able to do my show from home during the quarantine is that my staff at The Late Show took it seriously early on and started working on contingencies to lead the Ed Sullivan Theater, if necessary, back on February 28th. That's the same day Trump said this. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? <laughs> coronavirus. They're politicizing it. This is their new hoax. And we're just a TV show. We're not supposed to be more prepared than the president of the United States. I mean, there's a good reason the Cuban Missile Crisis wasn't solved by the Beverly Hillbillies. Paul Khrushchev has installed missiles out by the cement pond. Whee! Doggy, might be time for a blockade. 
Trump also recently tried something he's never done before, listening to another person. This afternoon, I met with the leaders, the top people of many of America's big, powerful, beautiful, and, you know, very, very important hospitals and hospital associations who join us today. We had a great meeting, learned a lot, and they've been going through a lot. You're just learning now that hospitals are going through a lot? It's April. That's like getting halfway through the final season of Breaking Bad and saying, wait a second, I think this dude's cooking meth. Bad. <gasps> Breaking Bad. On Monday, Trump said he had total authority on deciding when the states would reopen, but the governor said, no, you don't. So the president responded with this strong statement. I will be speaking to all 50 governors very shortly, and I will then be authorizing each individual governor of each individual state to implement a reopening. Okay, so he's authorizing the governors to do what they were already doing. I see. In addition, I hereby authorize the sun to rise in the east and the tide will be allowed to roll in but only for six hours, then you have to go out again, Tide. Sorry, Tide. No free ride. Then, you might find this hard to believe, the briefing took a bit of a weird turn when Trump just started listing all the people he's going to talk to. We have a list of different industries that I'll be discussing by meeting by telephone. In banking, it's Bank of America. Brian Moynihan's been great. J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon. Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, U.S. Bancorp, Morgan Stanley, James Gorman, Grand Rapids State Bank, Southern Bancorp, the Construction Labor Workforce, International Union of Operating Engineers, Jim Callahan, North America Building Trades Union, Sean McGarvey, these are a lot of friends of mine. And the band is playing him off. Trump went on for 10 full minutes listing companies and names, including some surprising health experts. McDonald's, Darden restaurants, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, Chick-fil-A, Subway, Bloomin' Brands, Yum! Brands, Papa John's, Wendy's. Not sure if those were the companies he was going to talk to or if he was just calling in his lunch order. Now, let me remind you, this is a briefing about the coronavirus crisis. So I say with all due respect, what does Yum! Brands know about that? They own Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and KFC. Delicious all. But famously, the Colonel only does one thing really well, and it's not deep-fried epidemiology. I mean, for Pete's sake, we're not even supposed to touch our faces, and the Colonel keeps tempting us to lick our fingers. I could just murder a bucket of chicken right now. Would you like some chicken? I would like some chicken. But the question on everyone's mind is, when is the country going to reopen? And Trump was coy. We'll give a date, but the date's going to be in the very near future. We will be announcing a date, but it'll be very short. And frankly, it'll be uh, at a time that will be earlier than the deadline that we imposed, the end of April. Okay, so in the very near future, very short, but earlier than the end of April. So the middle of April, it's, it's April 15th. So now, is it over? Can we leave our houses and start licking doorknobs? Don't lick doorknobs. Well, hopefully he won't make up his mind soon because one senior administration official says Trump has been so insistent on the reopening that some officials worry only a narrow window exists to provide information to change his mind. Yes, it's a narrow window and it's in the Oval Office and they're throwing desperate messages through it written on slices of American cheese. The federal government isn't the only one making plans. Yesterday, we heard from California governor and mannequin American Gavin Newsom. Newsom outline the framework that California was going to use to reopen their economy. He said that California was going to take it slow. There's no light switch here. I would argue it's more like a dimmer. Let's not make the mistake of pulling the plug too early. Governor, I get what you're saying, but you do know that pulling the plug is not how you turn off a light, right? Unless the light bulb has a do not resuscitate order. 
Newsom also warned that the new normal won't feel normal. You may be having dinner uh, with a waiter wearing gloves, maybe a face mask, uh, dinner where the menu is disposable, uh, where the tables, half of the tables in that restaurant uh, no longer appear, where your temperature is checked before you walk in to the establishment. These are likely scenarios. Now, that may sound like a pretty grim date night, but some restaurants are already adapting, like the new casual dining chain, ICU Fridays. Try their new fully loaded N95 masks. These are, of course, hard financial times for millions of Americans, but help is on the way because this week, the IRS started sending out stimulus payments. Now, I'll remind you, it is April 15th, and the IRS is scrambling to pay you. Tables are turned, IRS. I hope you enjoy making a sweaty last-minute appointment with your CPA, Alan Farkas, to beg him to let you claim your cat's litter box as a working farm. Now, thanks to the Congress-approved bailout, 80 million Americans can expect up to $1,200 plus $500 per child. Finally, a reason for Trump to acknowledge the existence of Eric. But there's been a bit of a snag because Donald Trump wants his name on the checks. In fact, Trump privately suggested to Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin that he formally sign the checks. Uh, I don't think anyone wants a check that Trump signed. I think that legally makes you a porn star. Now, it turns out, the president is not legally allowed to sign checks from the IRS. So instead, Mnuchin decided to put the president's name in the memo section of the check. Still better than Trump's alternative, tucking the cash directly into Americans' G-strings. So the IRS changed the system to stroke Trump's ego. Unfortunately, stamping his name on all those checks has caused a delay in issuing the first batch of paper checks. That is really dumb. But... It isn't the first time Trump has put his name on something really dumb. We've got a show for you tonight. I am talking to Shaquille O'Neal and from the International Space Station, astronaut Jessica Meir. Stick around.